Hi everyone, I am inspired by all of you and my colleagues to do the video of the brain and its functional areas, clinical anatomy. Now all of you know the brain is a very delicate organ and we have to protect any delicate organ like a uh, good locker or anything expensive thing. Now this brain, this is about uh, semi-solid in structure and it has got the weight is about 1.45 kg in case of female and the 1.5 kg in case of male. Don't think that female brain is uh, less than the male brain. Because of the surface area, it has been seen the male brain and the female brain are equal in size and equal in function also. Now you will see the brain as it is the central processing part and like the CPU and you will see this must be kept in a compact region and which one is this compact region you see this is the skull cap you see this is the skull cap where we will get the scalp and the hair this is the uh, view of the cranium and this whole thing this is known as the skull cap and this skull cap is formed by the flat bone in front you will see the frontal bone which has got the orbital cavity on the two sides you will see the quadrangular the parietal bone and behind you will see behind this is the occipital bone when you lie down the occipital bone touches the pillow now this bone when the skull cap is removed you will see you will see the whole brain and it is situated in this fossa that is known as the cranial fossa or that is known as the base of the brain now when i remove the brain together you will see this brain has got two cerebral hemisphere one is this one is left hemisphere one is right hemisphere it has got in front that is the midbrain pons and the medulla oblongata and below you will get another the little brain or small brain that is known as the cerebellum so you can visualize the brain as well as cerebellum the whole thing is known as the brain it is protected by this skull cap which is bony and there is no movement takes place in this region because they are connected by means of fibrous tissue which is known as the sutures. So sutures have got no movement. Not only this bony protection is there, it is also protected by means of three layers of meninges. What are these three layers? The outer one is very tough. When someone removes the skull cap, you will see the meninges is so tight that you cannot see the salsa and gyri of the brain. That is the elevation and the depression. The gyri is the elevation and salsa is the depression. So the dura mater is known as the tough mother. So it is so tight. So he keep, she keep her child in very much control. Next layer is cobweb like the arachnoid matter and the last layer which is ultimately that is lying the brain that is known as the pia matter or the soft mother. 
this pear mater or the soft mater is named so because it cannot leave this hard child alone. It goes along with the child that is within the salsa, jaira, it is lined by the pyramid. Next, I shall told you that we shall discuss about the cerebral hemisphere. Now you will see there are two cerebral hemisphere. These two cerebral hemisphere are separated by a connection which is known as the corpus callosum, the commissural fiber. Now this brain is subdivided into four lobes. How it is subdivided? Under which the bone lies. Now this is the frontal bone you see and in this frontal bone beneath that frontal bone you will see there is the frontal lobe of the brain. Next you will see the on the side there is the parietal bone. The parietal bone it covers the parietal lobe of the hemisphere and behind there is the bone which is known as the occipital bone. It covers the occipital lobe of the hemisphere. So this human brain is divided into four parts. What are the four parts? The frontal lobe, the temporal lobe, the parietal lobe and the occipital lobe which is lying behind that is the occipital lobe. So these are these four areas of the brain and this is arbitrarily divided by three sulcus and two artificial lines. The sulcuses are the central sulcus. You will see this is the central sulcus, this one and there is other thing that is the lateral sulcus and next one on the medial surface we will get another sulcus which is known as the parieto occipital sulcus. So you will see here the parieto occipital sulcus. So these three sulcus and the two line divides this brain into the parts that is the four lobes. The frontal lobe, the parietal lobe, the temporal lobe, below this fissure that is the um, lateral sulcus and the occipital lobe that is behind the parietal lobe you will see in this region. Now the brain performs a many a function you will see and these functions are that there is cognitive function that means which you can assess your power of thinking, you can assess the power of doing in anything, any subject, any correlation of the thing that is known as the cognitive power. Cognitive power is not only situated on the cerebral hemisphere, it is also situated in the our small brain that is the cerebellum. So cognitive power is also located in the cerebellum, the cerebellum hemisphere. Next thing, what are the other function of the brain? There are the motor function you will know. You will do all type of activities. Sometimes the mosquito that is uh, biting you. What you will do? You will do, you will make a slap over the mosquito. So you will see what is the programming inside the brain. And that programming directs you that you will have to flex this joint that is the elbow joint, you have to flex this joint, the wrist joint, you have to flex this finger, the digital joints and then ultimately you will slap it. So what are the programming of this 
So all this done by the motor activity of the brain. First I shall discuss about the functional areas that is situated within the frontal lobe of the brain. Now you will see here the red color area which is the precentral gyrus you will see here. Now this precentral gyrus is known area as the primary motor area. How they will, the scientists will say that this is the primary motor area? They are do this region of a monkey, rhesus monkey, they stimulate in this region. So they will see their activity will be increased. Next time they will stimulate another monkey here they ablate this portion or remove this portion and they will give stimulation, no activity is there. And there are clinical pathological study in the neurology department. It will say that this area is known as the primary motor area. Now primary motor area or broadband area 4. So previously we will say that this is the broadband area 4 that is the Broadband area 3 to 1 because the, this is a nice story behind this Broadband area. What is that Broadband uses the cages number. Number 4 cages they stimulate ablate in the region of the um, this precentral gyrus and he identified that this is the area 4. So, Bodman number is nothing but the cage number of the monkey. Now, this primary motor area, they will learn, you can, uh, all the things. After that, you will get this pink color area, not only this pink color area, behind that, in front of this uh, red color area, this portion, whole portion is known as the Pre-motor area. Pre-motor area, actually this is the secondary area. In everywhere, in every area, there is one primary area, one secondary area and another association area. But most of you should know that most of our brain remains silent. So what is the function of this pre-motor area? Now, the every process of learning, how, what is the process of learning? When you will the growing, when you are th uh, three years old or four years old, your uh, parents will tell you that write the A, write the B, and all this in like dot, 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 like a the line. You should do another thing that is, you surround all these things like your um, spring, like. So this all things you remember and you should acquire from the uh, two years onwards. Not only that, there is also the muscles situated within the voice. You can modulate your voice more when the, you are gradually Rating on. So it is all stored, the skillful activity is all stored in the premotor area. Now in the primary motor area you should astonish our body is represented as upside down. That means head and below and the leg is on the upper part. So this is known as the homunculus. This is the motor homunculus. You don't think who, whose size is big that is represented at area in a large way. No, whose function is more. That means the thumb function is more. The lips function is more. They are represented like here. Uh, 10 millimeter area. Whereas your leg, whole of the inferior extremity, it is about 10 millimeter area. 
So according to the type of function and the utility of the function, this that is the representation of the area in the brain. So this is the primary motor area, this is the pre-motor area and you will see in this region that means this frontal lobe is again subdivided by superior, middle and the inferior frontal gyrus. Behind the inferior from middle frontal gyrus there you will get another type of area. Yellow color it is represented here. And this is known as the frontal eye field. That means this region con controls our conjugate movements of the eyeball. That means when you look to the right side, your left eye is also moves towards the right side. So this movement is known as the conjugate deviation of the eyeball. So this is represented in this region. So you will see these are the motor areas which you will see in the frontal lobe of the brain. Next is that the post central gyrus. Now in the post central gyrus there is an area which is represented here that the silver color area. And this is known as the primary somatosensory area. Primary somatosensory means you can uh, remember the touch touch of your mother from the very childhood, the touch of the hot thing, you will cry, the touch of different types of touch you will understand. And that touch, the it is uh, when you will getting older and older, there is more variety of touches will acquainted. So here, this is known as the somatosensory area. And this somatosensory area, again, there is the represented at upside down. Next, the secondary somatosensory area, it is situated below, that is near the temporal lobe, or the above the lateral sulcus. So in this somatosensory area, the where there is memory, there is you can hear the face it end is in front and the leg end is behind. And the secondary somatosensory area is small because sensation is limited. You cannot increase more. So all this area very much susceptible, susceptible to the tumor, susceptible for the arterial hemorrhage, cerebral hemorrhage, all this thing. So or there is some atrophy of the brain tissue. So the activity of this area diminished and in cerebral hemorrhage, if it occurs in the motor area, there is the paralysis. Either if the right side is affected, the left sided paralysis, because it is contralateral in control. So today, I shall discuss up to this. So in the next session, I shall discuss other areas of the brain. Thank you everyone for your patience hearing and encouraging me in every sphere of life.